to talk about this because uh, it's important. A, a friend of mine, Jay Jackson, uh, led me to this story and did, uh, dug in a little deep to figure out what the hell is actually going on. Um, Tulsi Gabbard came out with a, with an anti-trans bill, and for before everybody freaks out and goes, "Oh, it's not anti-trans, anti. It's not anti. It's it's we're looking at the science. All that shit's been debunked. It's anti-trans." It's an anti-trans bill, and it is a betrayal to the LGBTQ community um, who she said she was an ally to, continued to be an ally to, and now has, all of a sudden, two weeks before she's done with Congress, decided to put this bill forward. Uh, So the bill is a Title IX bill. It's a Title IX bill. What is Title IX? It essentially grants equality for women athletes to ensure that they can get scholarships and um, grants and things of that sort when it comes to sports, right? So, and and from, uh, I'm not a Title IX expert by any means, uh, but a lot of it has to do with the money, and, lo- and uh, Title IX seems to be messy anyway. So, Tulsi's bill basically says that it'll take away funding for any schools that let trans women uh, that's men who have transitioned to becoming women trans women who are women uh, if you if you have trans women as part of you know your athletics program you will not receive funding because uh, we're going by the biological biological sex of the individual okay well their biological sex would be female so why would you get in the way of taking money and power from women using a uh, use, using something that is meant to empower women? So that would be the first question. So she has gone on, uh, you know, several times explaining her position, but her position, quite frankly, is wrong. And this is coming as someone who supported Tulsi. I I feel like that is no uh, no shock to a lot of people. I've talked about Tulsi. I have defended Tulsi when Tulsi needed to be defended. I've also criticized Tulsi when Tulsi needs to be criticized. And this is one of those moments uh, where Tulsi needs to be criticized because... This is a Joe Rogan argument, right? Joe Rogan has made this argument on his show several times. And look, it's fine, right? You can have a question. That, that, that is an important question to ask. What do we do about transgender folks when it comes to sports? Great question. <clears throat> let's figure it out and let's find an inclusive answer. We're, we're dealing with something that, you know, uh, our society particularly has not addressed in a, in a great way uh, or, or ever at all. Transgender people are going to play sports. How do we include them in that? The argument that Tulsi and the, you know, the big... Joe Rogans of the world are making is, well, if it is a man that transitioned to be a woman, uh, they have an unfair advantage because uh, men have, you know, bigger, stronger, faster muscles and uh, more athletic prowess, which in and of itself becomes a sexist argument, right? Because isn't that isn't that the whole big thing of, uh, of equality within sports? Wasn't there a battle of the sexes in the 80s uh, to, to prove that men and women uh, have the same level of athletic prowess, regardless of gender, regardless of what is in between their legs. Isn't that the point? Or was that all just for show because you could sell merchandise? So Chelsea's using the science argument here, which is also debunked, mind you. Popular science and the ACLU have debunked a science argument. Uh, from, from this article, 
the, the, the person that wrote the Popular Science article specifically uh, talks about uh, going through hormone therapy for about two years two, uh, or, or more, possibly. It's like two plus years or something like that. And when you go through hormone therapy, it changes your muscle structure. It changes your skeletal structure. It changes a bunch of stuff. So this notion that, you know, um, oh, the, the trans women, they're, you know, their they're post-pubescent muscles are going to be faster and stronger. And, you know, it's an, it's an unfair advantage um, is false. It's bunk because of hormone treatment, hormone therapy. And then, you know, and then the, the other side of the argument, which is, which you can't claim that this, is, this has anything to do with science because it's the same argument as, oh, the transgender people are going into the, into the bathrooms uh, to commit sexual assault, which has never fucking happened. And if it has happened, it's, it's some bigot that wants to prove that right. It's the same thing as like when people are, are like, oh, people are crossing state lines to vote twice in elections. And who was the one that did it? It was a fucking conservative Trump voter that got caught trying to do that. So it's these myths, and those aren't based in science. So now that you have the hormone therapy, right, that debunks your argument based on science, uh, you, don't, you, you, you only have the argument that's based in bigotry. Which is, oh, men want to uh, dominate in sports, so they're going to say that they're transgender women and have to play in women's sports. What? What an insane... That's also not how that works. I have yet to hear of a case... where... someone that is a man says they're trans to play sports and and get scholarships and win grants and so on and so forth I've yet to hear about that case so to make the claim that this bill is protecting women because of something that is unsubstantiated is not scientific. That's not based in science, period. So she's wrong. So Tulsi Gabbard is wrong. That's, that's, I mean, it's been debunked. (laughs) And here's the thing is like, Tulsi's smart enough to know to talk about the hormone therapy. But she doesn't. She just brings up this Title IX. Oh, it's in respect to Title IX. It's in respect to Title IX. And to talk about it like this, in this way, it's she's bringing, she's bringing up this argument and kind of She's kind of making transgender people like a performance enhancing drug. Like, oh, if you're if you're trans, then you have an unfair advantage. It's like taking steroids. She's not talking like the uh, about them like they're people. She's talking about them like they're some kind of performance enhancing drug. Which Tulsi, that's not what allies do. This bill, when when I read that this was happening, which was maybe two two or three days ago, or maybe maybe late last week, um, and then I followed up and I you know did my research and looked through it. What's really peculiar about this is that Tulsi Gabbard, despite her past. One has come out and apologized. Two has put forward anti-discriminatory LGBTQ bills and got them passed within the House. 
She has a 100% rating with the Human Rights Commission. Com- committee? Commission? The HRC is what it, you know. This pro-LGBTQ uh, group. 100% rating. And then two weeks before she leaves, this is one of the bills she puts forward. And she makes this bogus claim of science. Why would someone do that? You know, and you're co-sponsoring with the Republican, you know. And she's co-sponsored other bills with Republicans, by the way. Uh, the bill to pardon Snowden and Assange, co-sponsored by a Republican. The bill that just passed to decriminalize marijuana on a federal level co-sponsored with Republicans. So that's not anything peculiar. What's peculiar is the discriminatory nature of this bill when, you, when you've apologized and put anti-discriminatory bills forward and championed them for years, for the years that you've been in Congress. And if you are making this claim for science, why not, instead of using science as a point of discrimination, use science as a point of inclusion. If the issue here really is Title IX, then how can we make Title IX be more inclusive to our trans brothers and sisters? And it's the focal point of Title IX itself. The focal point of Title IX, once again, comes down to money. Who is going to get this money? This ensures that trans kids are not going to get scholarships in uh, in a culture... That's already just that's that's already made. I mean, it's already made things difficult for trans people. Why make things harder for them? This bill ensures that they're not going to get any kind of scholarship, any kind of grants. Uh, It treats them as second class citizens, treats them as less than. And I see people that are Tulsi stands that that will not criticize any of the things she says that kind of look at this and they go well why not make a, a trans league because separate but equal doesn't really work because we tried separate but equal it doesn't really work and here's the reality kids is if the Trans League doesn't sell as much fucking Coca-Cola or Bud Light as, you know, the Men's League does, then there goes the Trans League. The second point is... You should really be questioning the education system here. What does it say about America that we have a system in place where the only way kids can afford an education is if they are above and beyond pushing them, pushing their own physical limits. And that's the only way that they can afford to go to college. I'm not sitting there I'm sitting here and, and, and trying to diminish kids that do get sports scholarships by no means but I'm saying if that's the only way that these kids can go to college then there is something wrong with the education system and within this context again why aren't trans kids eligible for the same kind of sports scholarships 
that any male or female, that a cisgendered male or female, would be eligible for. Don't they deserve the same rights? This is not a safety argument, folks. This is a divisive argument. This is a discriminatory argument. And Tulsi Gabbard is wrong. She's wrong about this. She's been right on a lot of things. She's been right about the military industrial complex. She's been right on Assange. She's been right on the Patriot Act. I wasn't 100% on board with her health care plan, but I didn't mind it. Pretty similar to the Australian health care model. I didn't mind it. Seemed all right. She was right about, she was right on the money with um, paper ballots. But when it comes to this, she is dead fucking wrong. Look, you have a choice to make in, in situations like this. When you come out and you go, well, we have a, an issue that we haven't really contended with as a society uh, about a group of people that we are unsure about how to include in a particular topic. Right? I'm being vague for the sake of being vague. You have a choice. Either you can be inclusive in your decision or you can be discriminatory in your decision. And Tulsi Gabbard has cho chosen the latter. And I am honestly not sure why. And if people are going to sit there and say, oh, it's to vie for a position at Fox News, mm, it's doubtful. I don't know if Tulsi really wants to be a pundit of sorts. I don't, like Andrew Yang, that was kind of his thing, is that... Uh, that he, I think he wanted a CNN contract and he got a CNN contract. I don't know if Tulsi's really looking for a Fox News contract. Uh, I don't know if Tulsi's looking for any kind of a contract with corporate media, especially when corporate media has slammed her that hard. I don't know if she's really looking for anything to do with politics at this point. I honestly don't know what the fuck is up. It's peculiar, it's wrong, and, you know, the more she pushes for this bill and the more I hear her talk about it, this is gonna. This is gonna be the 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 nail in the head that makes you completely lose my support. I'm not for over supporting mascots anymore. Anyway, that's. I kind of once Bernie and Tulsi endorsed Joe Biden. I kind of looked at it and was like, I I'm, I think I'm done, kind of pushing for a candidate. I think I'm more gonna push for these ideas. But I was anti-war before Tulsi Gabbard's, before I supported Tulsi Gabbard. I supported Tulsi Gabbard because she was anti-war. And she still might be, and I still support that idea. But this is something I can't fucking get behind. And you have two weeks left in Congress. Is this the bill that you want to go out on? To be known as the anti-trans representative from Hawaii? It's a really weak move. And I got to tell you, as someone that has followed her career and defended her when she needed to be defended, uh, this is a huge slap in the face of a lot of her supporters, I think. Um, and, it, and, it, and it hurts more people than it benefits. It hurts more people than it benefits. You were, you were considered a progressive because you were against the establishment. Progressives don't put out discriminatory bills. The end of her career is going to be a, I mean, she's put out a litany of bills 
but the bills that she's getting the most noise for is not for the the pardoning of Assange and Snowden. It's not for the decriminaliz- decriminalization bill. It's going to be this anti-trans bill. If that's what she wants her legacy to be, then that's what her legacy is going to be. And it's super fucking disappointing. I don't know why she's doing it. It's it's very strange. And it's not about science. Uh, if it is about economics, it's about discriminatory economics. Uh, and it just kind of makes you look like a bigot in this situation. Uh, and if the choice comes down to supporting trans people over supporting Tulsi Gabbard, I'm going to choose trans people, man. I'm going to go people over politician any fucking day of the week. I got enough uh, trans friends who I know would be fucking heartbroken about this. And every single argument that you've made dehumanizes them. The science argument is debunked. You're basically treating them like a performance-enhancing drug. You're ensuring that they can't get financial assistance to go to college if they excel at a particular sport. And the best idea that's come out of the the comment sections is a separate but equal fucking genre of sports that will be that that will make them look like a you know I apologize for for the crass language here but a sideshow that's what most of the country will look at them as a league for for just trans people would not be considered as serious. I mean, look at the women's leagues of, of sports. I'm not a big sports guy, but look at the like the, uh, the women's leagues of sports don't get enough national attention as the men's leagues do. There's already an inequality here. And instead of addressing the real inequality within sports, you are going after trans kids that want to try to fucking get a scholarship because they excel at sports and want to be who the fuck they actually are. I'm going to choose their fucking side over Tulsi Gabbard's on this any day of the week. And Tulsi is one motherfucking percent wrong in this. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.